how to control your emotions, the secret to success. Did you know that 31 million entrepreneurs in the United States, or at least they claim that on their Instagram, this accounts for approximately 16% of all adults in the workforce. And according to another national survey, 78% of millennials consider entrepreneurs successful. 62% of them consider starting their own business and 55% said that they believe their generation is more business minded than the past generation. This shows you that more and more young adults are going into business instead of the traditional workforce. But what do you think the most significant drivers to becoming a successful entrepreneur is? Is it having a diverse and exemplary technical skill? Is it having profitable assets? Or maybe it's a wide range of technical know-how. Well, they will definitely be all valuable if you wanna be a successful entrepreneur. But we will not be talking about that in today's video. Today, I wanna to talk to you more about the interesting aspect of being a successful entrepreneur, emotional control. Hi there, I'm Munif Ali. I'm here to empower you so that you can attain financial and personal development goals. So if you like this type of content, go ahead and smash that like and subscribe button for that algorithm to know that these videos are helpful. Before we get into how you can control your emotions, let's first talk about why emotional control is important for an entrepreneur's success. When you're an entrepreneur, you will always need to make decisions. Decisions like what business will you do? What strategy is going to be implemented? Which person to assign that particular task? How will you proceed with your market? marketing strategies, your product design, and much, much more. And emotions can sometimes influence not only the results of your decisions, but also the speed at which you make them. For instance, when you're excited, you'll make quick decisions without thinking through what the consequences may be. And when you're angry or stressed out, you might become prone to being impatient and making rash decisions. Or on the other hand, if you're afraid, you might be overly cautious, resulting in indecisiveness and the possibility of missing out on a great opportunity or deal. To be a successful entrepreneur, you must maintain composure when making decisions regardless of your own emotions and circumstances. This is because your decisions can make or break your business. You are responsible not only for yourself, but also for the lives of your employees and the success or failure of your business. Now that I'm done with that, let's talk about how you can control your emotions. Now, most of my life, I've always had a hot head and I easily get pissed off and I will easily react. But after I became an entrepreneur after time and time again, learning through the process, says, these are my tips for you. Number one, identify your emotional trigger. This is the first crucial step in controlling your emotions. Now I came from a pretty rough neighborhood and before the military could train me, if you looked at me sideways, it was on and cracking. I would get into physical altercations and fights all the time just from one slight look or one slight comment. And it took a whole lot of inner belief, conquering my demons, looking at my inner self, reflecting on my actions to curb that kind of reactionary process that I had. I remember one time distinctly I was walking in a restaurant for a business meeting and some guy looked at me in a way in a certain way kind of you know looked at me up and down and had a frown on his face and I turned around and I was like what's up you got a problem and I was right in front a deal making opportunity for me right the gentleman just said hey you know what no I just liked your shoes but that was a perfect example and it was triggers like that that caused me to rethink what I was doing. I was no longer back on the block. I was in a business suit, in a business environment, ready to take advantage of a business opportunity. So I knew what my triggers were. And from then on, people could look at me sideways. I had a gentleman crossing the street that you know went like this because I was like an inch above the crosswalk. I normally would have probably reacted by opening the door and tuning him up and getting into a physical altercation because that's how I was in my 20s. But what I did was, I just waved at him and then he turned around and, and kept on walking. So you can see, I knew that that was a trigger for me and I worked on it. So when your emotional triggers resurface and you aren't able to cope with them, you'll be making a rational decision that even when you don't understand why you made such a decision, because during that time, you weren't thinking at all. You're overwhelmed by your emotion and the triggers. It is very detrimental to your company, especially if you're making important decisions. For instance, during a business negotiation, when you sit down at the negotiation, negotiating table and you notice that across from you is your nemesis and you recall an unpleasant memory that happened between you and that person and then you begin fuming with anger and not listening to the details of the contract. You just kept replaying that memory in your head and when it's about time to make a decision, since you didn't hear any of the details and to spare yourself from embarrassment, you agree to whatever the other party has laid out. Of course, this is just an example, an exaggerated one at that. But the point is letting your emotional triggers go unchecked significantly impact whatever future decisions you'll make. And at worst, it will risk you and your company's credibility. And that is something you don't wanna do as an entrepreneur. So identify your emotional triggers. It could be 
anything from certain people to certain memories, places, specific words, even smells. It differs from person to person, but everyone definitely has at least one emotional trigger that requires some type of deeper reflection. But working on it would definitely be worth it. It will allow you to avoid them, and if not, you will be at least able to prepare a coping mechanism when dealing with that. Nowadays, when someone looks at me sideways, I just smile and just keep it moving. Number two, don't suppress your feelings. Control your emotions doesn't mean repressing them, but instead regulating them. And suppressing your feelings is an act of repression. That is something you wouldn't want. Bottling up your feelings won't make them go away. You're just ignoring them and not acknowledging that they are there. Are there times that you feel irritated just out of nowhere? Are you feeling so stressed out even when you're not busy? If so, then maybe you are suffering from consequences of bottled up emotions. If you're constantly irritated and stressed out, you won't be able to perform effectively as a leader of an organization. At worst, you might even direct that bottled up feeling that you have towards a colleague or an employee, which often results in strained relationships. You wouldn't want this to happen, especially if you want to be a successful entrepreneur and leader. After all, your people are the most valuable resource that will help you succeed. In fact, if you can nurture your employees with a high level of productivity, you might even perform much better than your competitors. Just a fun fact, before we go on to the next thing, you can measure how much your employees can contribute to your company by calculating your revenue per employee. This ratio will determine how effective you are in utilizing your employees and their contributions to the growth of your company. In 2021, Netflix was the most effective with $2.62 million per revenue per employee, followed by Apple at $2.37 million in revenue per employee. Number three, take several deep breaths. Nothing is more effective than taking a deep breath when you're trying to calm down. Whether you're angry, upset, or frustrated, this is even more helpful when you're overwhelmed with stress. And as an entrepreneur, stress and frustrations are everyday occurrences. You can never avoid them, so the least you can do is to find a way to manage and minimize its influence. One of the best ways to do this is by taking a few deep breaths. It definitely works for me when I'm starting to get triggered. Number four, don't raise your voice. Being an entrepreneur has never been smooth sailing for anyone. You'll be exposed constantly in situations that will test your patience, whether it's a problematic employee or complainers or stubborn business partners or even as small as losing your parking space when you're already in a hurry. When faced with these type of situations, it's only natural that you want to scream in anger. Raising your voice will never produce a positive result. You won't be able to communicate your point effectively and it will only intensify the anger that you're feeling. On the other hand, if you want to maintain composure, speak in a calm, more assertive tone, it will give you the point of more power and improves your communication between parties. This will lessen the conflict in your organization, making it more conducive as a productive workplace. And also, it puts a lot of respect back in the game. When you're yelling and screaming at people, it's never a good look for a leader. Number five, take a step back. If you've already tried everything and you can't control your emotions, then maybe it's time for you to take a step back. Take time out and calm down. This is an effective strategy to prevent the situation from escalating when both parties are experiencing emotional flooding. And according to a study, our brain's fight or flight process takes about 20 minutes, meaning you will need at least 20 minutes to calm down completely. During this time, you should listen to music, do some stretching, do some deep breathing, do some walking. Don't think about why you are angry. Instead, think about how both of you communicate communicate effectively without getting angry. And when you return, try to listen calmly to the other party, even if you're in disagreement with their points. We have now reached the end of our list, but before we wrap up today's video, let me ask you guys, what among the things that I mentioned do you find most relatable? Please share with me your thoughts and experiences in the comment section down below. Look, I've learned a great deal in my 30 years of being an entrepreneur. Being an entrepreneur is not all sunshine and rainbows. You experience ups and downs and wins and losses, happiness and frustration, impatience. You always find yourself bombarded with many stressors that sometimes can get very overwhelming. If you get upset, angry, irritated, frustrated, that's all right, it's part of the process. Just reflect on it and get better as time goes by. The important thing is that you're aware of your emotions and will not let them get the best of you. Thank you so much for staying with me till the end and I hope that you found this video meaningful. And if you did, please go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you still want to learn more, go ahead and check out the next video. This could be the reason why you're always procrastinating.